Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Hello, everybody. In Episode 7, I'm going to show you how I paint the interior, do some detail painting with my airbrush, as well as using some toothpicks and some basic weathering techniques that I use. For all my airbrushing needs, I use a Badger 200 with a CO2 air source. All the machine guns were airbrushed with Tester's Model Master Gunmetal Color. The feeder belts for the 50 caliber machine guns were airbrushed with all clads dull aluminum color. All the interior parts were painted with testers zinc chromate color. The shell casing canvas bags were painted with testers olive drab with a few drops of flat white added to lighten up the color just a little bit. I used the same lightened olive drab color for the seat, which I hand painted with the detail brush, and then airbrushed the canvas cover for the aft fuselage machine guns. The small details were picked out with Tester's flat black and a tiny detail brush. The propeller tips were airbrushed with Tester's flat white and then overcoated with Tester's flat yellow. The propeller tips were masked and the edges of the masking tape were butted up against the very petite raised lines on the tips of the propeller blades. The propeller hubs were airbrushed with all clad dull aluminum and then the hubs were masked. The propeller blades were airbrushed with two coats of testers flat black color. The propellers look pretty good with all the masking removed and their sharp demarcation lines between the colors. The interiors of the cowlings were airbrushed with two coats of tester zinc chromate. These are the engines that I'll be using and if you want to know how I painted them, there's a YouTube video on my paint layering technique that I used to paint these beautiful resin 2 detail 3D printed engines. The 500 pound bombs were airbrushed with testers flat white and then overcoated with testers flat yellow. To position the thin yellow stripes on the tips of the 500 pound bombs, I positioned a larger piece of masking tape and then butted the thinner strip of masking tape up against that edge and then removed the larger strip of tape. The bombs were then airbrushed with two coats of testers flat black and testers olive drab colors. With the masking tape removed, the bombs look pretty good and there are sharp demarcation lines between the colors. The landing gear were airbrushed with two coats of all clads dull aluminum color. The landing gear oleos were painted with testers chrome color using a very small detail brush. Both sets of tires received two coats of testers flat black color. To paint the hubs, I laid a section of masking tape over the tire and used a pencil to outline the raised area of the hub's edge. I then used the tip of a sharp number 11 X-Acto blade to cut along the pencil line and remove that center circle. I then used the tip of the pencil to be sure that the edges of the masking tape were pushed down around the lip of the hub. The hubs were then airbrushed with two coats of all clads dull aluminum color. With all the masking tape removed, the tires looked pretty good. I had to do a little bit of touch-up work where the tires met the hubs, and I used a very tiny detail brush to accomplish this. The radar dome was painted flat black and all the interior parts were painted flat black with a little bit of flat white added in order to lighten up the flat black color just a little bit. The pilot and co-pilot seats were airbrushed with green zinc chromate and then those areas were masked off so that I could airbrush the lightened olive drab color on the seat cushions. The seats look pretty good and there's sharp lines between the colors. 
The control columns were masked so that the canvas covers at the base of the control sticks could be airbrushed with testers lightened olive drab color. With all the masking tape removed, the canvas covers at the base of the control columns looked pretty good. The control column yokes were painted green zinc chromate with a detail brush and then all the little details on the control column itself were picked out with the tips of toothpicks. Toothpicks were also used to pick out all the raised detail on this part. These sub-assemblies received two coats of testers zinc chromate color. The fuselage interiors as well as the rear gunners area also received two coats of testers zinc chromate color. The AF 50 caliber machine gun frame was airbrushed green zinc chromate. To pick out the surface detail in the Bombay area, I used tiny strips of masking tape around the edges of the raised detail and then covered the large area with bigger strips of masking tape prior to airbrushing. The raised detail received two coats of flat black color and before I removed the masking tape, I dry brushed the edges of the detail with a tiny flat brush and silver paint. The back side of Edward's clear placard instrument panel needs to be painted flat white so that the instruments will stand out. The instrument console was airbrushed with two coats of flat black and here you can see how that flat white color I airbrushed on the back side of that clear placard really makes the instruments stand out. For dry brushing, I like to use a tiny flat brush and different sizes and shapes of sponges. The 3x5 cards are used to get rid of the vast majority of the paint before you dry brush. The edges of this part were dry brushed with testers silver paint and the canvas bags received very, very tiny amounts of a lighter olive drab color so that the canvas looked worn. The seat was dry brushed with a lighter coat of olive drab and the edges of the frame as well as some of the surfaces were dry brushed with silver paint. The rear gunner's aiming device on this part was painted flat black and then all of the edges were carefully and lightly dry brushed with silver paint. The edges of the propellers where paint usually wears off rather quickly were dry brushed with the silver color. The edges of the fins on the 500 pound bombs were also dry brushed with the silver color. The edges of the bomb frames and the edges of the rear plate for the rear gunner's position as well as the seat edges were dry brushed with silver paint and then a sponge was used to provide even more silver paint onto the flat surface of that plate. The edges of the consoles were also dry brushed with silver paint, as well as the edges of the control columns. The raised edges on this sub-assembly were dry brushed with that small flat brush. And then to get the effect of random chipping on the flat surfaces, I used a sponge. I really like the visual effect that the sponges provide. As you can see on this sub-assembly, which is for the cockpit, you get more random chipping than you would if you were to try to dry brush these surfaces. It looks pretty realistic. I use this same technique on the inside areas of the fuselage. First, I dry brush the raised edges with that tiny flat brush and then I used the sponges to give more of a random chipping effect on the flat surfaces. Don't forget to dry brush the surfaces of the rear gunner's position. The console has a lot of petite raised detail and this detail can be picked out by dry brushing it with that small flat brush. After all the dry brushing is done, it's time to start smudging up the interior a little bit. I like to use Pestel pencils for this process. What I do is I take a Pestel pencil and run it across a piece of sandpaper and then carefully start smudging up the interior with different size brushes. 
When it comes to the smudging technique, less is always better. As you can see on these parts, just a little bit of that black pastel smudges up the surface just enough to make it look dirty. The part on the right was smudged, and you can see how the dark pastel color darkens up the zinc chromate just a little bit. Every small interior part needs just a little bit of smudging. Here you can see on the inside of the fuselage the difference it makes when you just use a little bit of smudging in order to dirty up the inside. It really enhances the appearance of the fuselage. Once you're done with the smudging process, you need to seal the pastel pencil dust onto the surface of all of these parts. I like to use Tester's Clear Flat Dull Coat for my sealing process. Edward's pre-painted seatbelts really enhance the appearance of any console area. I like to start by attaching the lap belts first. And after the super glue has dried on the lap belts, you can add the shoulder harnesses. And when it's done, it really enhances the appearance of the seats inside the cockpit. The instrument placard was carefully positioned onto the back of the console and then glued into place with tiny drops of super glue along the edge. The additional instrumentation placards came from Edwards' pre-painted cockpit set. Edwards' pre-painted machine gun belts really enhance the appearance of this part, and once the top turret is assembled, it's going to really look good. Here's a front view of the assembled upper turret. The combination of the machine gun belts, the master's brass barrels, careful painting, and dry brushing and smudging really makes this part stand out. The feeder belts, as well as the difference in color between the feeder belts and the machine guns, really enhance the appearance of these parts. Here you can clearly see the effect that the variance in colors and subtle weathering really has on sub-assemblies. This is a good example of the additive effect of both painting and weathering. All the gizmos and gadgets from Edward's pre-painted cockpit set have now been glued in place on the starboard side of the fuselage. The port side is now also complete, and once the fuselage is glued together, all these tiny gizmos and gadgets are really going to enhance the appearance of the cockpit area. With the cockpit now assembled, you can really see how the variance in colors, as well as careful painting and careful and subtle weathering, can really make a difference and enhance the appearance of any sub-assembly. This concludes Episode 7. In Episode 8, we're going to attach all the interior parts, close up the fuselage, and glue the wings and the tail, and move on to airbrushing the exterior surface. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music and happy scale modeling!